believe. I have just seen a ghost. Is that somebody there? <laughs> no, no, just, just... I'm not going down there. No way. Oh, oh, no, drop no. the camera. Get up now before you die. Fielding, and this week I brought my team to North Wales to a place that is said to be so haunted the owners have called us in to find out who or what is causing so much trouble. Welcome to Most Haunted and the Tivoli Venue. The Tivoli Venue is situated in Buckley, North Wales. Originally a central hall which would have served the people of Buckley. The majority would have been employed in the pottery factories or coal mining industries from the 17th century onwards. In 1925, the cinema and music hall was built on top of the hall's demolished site. In 1945, the venue suffered from a fire that blazed throughout the top half of the building, leading to one fatality. The Tivoli venue has been a place that has entertained not just local people, but people from around the world. Famous bands have donned the stage, from the Beatles, the Rolling Stones to Coldplay, and a plethora of up-and-coming new artists. But the owners can't ignore the strange goings-on that have been occurring regularly anymore. Strange figures have been seen on the stairs with no logical explanation. The image of a hanged man has been witnessed by the staff on their security cameras. Doors bang, smoke is seen and smelt, and the poltergeist activity is violent. A strange figure has been seen descending these stairs on numerous occasions. Now, it normally happens when the building has been locked up and everyone is accounted for. A frightening situation that beggars belief. This small room plays host to the ghost of a hanged man that was seen by staff on their security cameras. Well, as you can imagine, the owner rushed in here only to find the room completely empty. The image of the hanged man will remain with the staff for many years, but who was he? And why does his terrifying image still haunt this building? occurred here in 1945 and rampaged through the top floor of this building. An alleged accident killed the projectionist in this very room, which has left a huge scar on the whole of the building. Since then, when people come into this room, some people have the feeling of being burnt and often they see smoke. But my one question is, why couldn't the projectionist get out and why did the door mysteriously jam? Tonight, we hope to find out. To understand more about the building and the regular strange occurrences, manager Kirsty Openshaw explained the reasons for calling us in to help. Not long after I first started, I was in reception speaking to one of the girls on the cloakroom, and just from the corner of my eye, I saw an old gentleman walking down the stairs. So as I looked over to see who he was, there was actually nobody there. The owner had a glass thrown at him upstairs in the green room, uh, he was up there on his own, just checking the place out. He walked behind the bar, then came back from behind the bar over to where the windows are, and the glass came from, behind, from the bar and just missed him. And he looked round everywhere and there was nobody there. Just him. Before I worked here, the manager had cashed up and was upstairs in the office. Everywhere had been locked up. The staff were inside the building having a drink, waiting for their food to be delivered. And in came the delivery driver. Um, they asked how he'd got in and apparently there was um, an old gentleman who had opened the door 
and let him in. And he described the man and nobody knew who this man was. Before now, it was a couple of months ago, I was in the office, I was in the building on my own, and I heard whistling. To start off with, it just went over my head, didn't think anything of it, until actually I realised I was on my own. So I looked out the front, there was nobody about, nobody down at the side, I walked around the building, nobody in here. Went back in the office, and it was getting louder, and then it just faded away. And I, that went on for about half an hour. There are smells of smoke that you can smell if you walk into the projection room or into the theatre, and also you see smoke as well sometimes coming down the corridor. It has actually been seen by more than one person on, at different times. The activity seemed to be regular and violent, but what does demonologist Fred Batt make of it? There is so much paranormal activity in this place, it's hard to know where to begin. But let's start at the most talked about thing that happened here, and that's the fire in the projection room in the 1940s, and somebody died there. And it's said that his spirit has never truly left. Tonight's going to be a great investigation. We've got three new people on board, we've got new equipment on board, and apart from anything else, this place is really haunted. Now, a lot of ghost paranormal groups use this. It's called a spirit box. Uh, it's very small. It used to be called Frank's Box, and we introduced it on Most Haunted about eight years ago. Uh, obviously, it's a lot smaller now, and for people who don't know what it is, it's basically a radio uh, transistor um, and it scans the airwaves looking for words um, supposedly spoken by dead people or from the other side. I've had some quite good results with it. I don't know what I think about it really, but I decided that this is a little bit too small for us now. We want to go bigger and better, and that's exactly what we've done. So, joining uh, the Most Haunted team, a new member of our family, one of the world's leading authorities on EVP. It's Eamon. Welcome to the Hi, family. Hi, thanks for having this me. This is amazing stuff. So, we go from this yeah, to, to this. Yeah, it's quite a lot of uh, equipment, so we couldn't quite squeeze it into there. And what do you think <laughs> to, these, to these things? Um, I think there's been mixed results with them. Um, I mean, personally, we, we, we tried to stay away from it because it's quite easy to debunk it. Basically, you're getting radio signals, so that is quite easy to debunk. Um, so we decided to take a more scientific approach so and ended up with this. Tell us what this is and, <laughs> in layman's terms, how does it work? So basically, what we've got essentially is we've got a carrier frequency that goes in. That's a radio frequency, just white noise that goes into the machine. Um, the antenna on top is capable of receiving scalar waves and we believe on our research that spirits communicate using scalar waves. So that's something that's quite, it's in its infancy of research really. So that then goes into a motherboard that's installed into the machine. That's then processed. So anything that's captured, anything above the human hearing range is then captured and converted back into the human hearing range. So if somebody wants to communicate with us here, that will be converted back through this machine. Then we have a set of synthesizers and different filters just to get that voice much clearer, uh, an amplifier and so on. And then, yeah, it just comes out of the speakers. Should we have a, should we have a listen? We can do, I mean, see we might... See what it sounds like? We could have something coming through now. Let's see. So if anybody can come through, could you say hello? OK, so that's coming through that right now. Right. And it's backed up by white noise, which is going through to it. So as our investigate, What's that? It sounds like as... laughing. <laughs> um, so as the investigation goes on, we'll keep this on all the time? Yeah, we'll keep basically. Recording. We'll just leave it in this, uh, in this hall and we'll just keep coming in here. We're going to put um, a recorder here just to see what we capture through the night as well. Okay. So that should be... That'd be interesting. really interesting. I say, this is going to be absolutely fantastic. Yeah. I'm so excited. It's going to be absolutely brilliant. And welcome to the team. Yeah, thank Great. you. I love bringing new members onto the Most Haunted team. And the more sceptical, the better. I'm always eager to gauge their reactions during an investigation. Another new member of the Most Haunted family is Glenn Hunt, broadcaster and sceptic this evening. You're here uh, for the rest of the series to look at the logic 
logical side of everything, aren't you? Yeah, I suppose from a viewer's point of view, it's easy to be removed from a situation when you're sat on the sofa at home shouting at the TV, oh, it's got to be some floorboards of that. Somebody from, from outside is throwing something and you can't see it. So I'm the lucky viewer, I suppose, inside the TV right now, uh, just having a look at this and seeing, you know, can I be more objective whilst I'm actually on the location with you? Well, we need that because you're quite right. A lot of people will jump to conclusions. I mean, we've already had something strange going. We've had a, a mirror uh, smash or something smashed, even though Carl and Stuart, they were away from it, they're on camera. I've got bars coming up. Where did it come from? Yeah. Hello? Got a light on there. Hello? See if anyone's down there. Uh, is uh, Greg down there? No, he's really there. Where does this take you? I don't know, it's just, it's just a empty... Myra. Maya. Crap. Yeah. Let's go and see yeah, if they heard right. anything then. Where did it come from? Was it here, do you think? Definitely from up there, yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> Holy <laughs> f What? Don't. It's interesting you brought that up because before Carl and Stuart were actually down those stairs and they did work their way back up again and it's quite possible, I'm not saying this is the case, but it's quite possible they might have dislodged something on the floor that was supporting the mirror and then eventually the weight of it shifted slightly and, and down it came. So what's the role of a sceptic? I think the role of a sceptic is to keep that level head when everything around you is going off and people are putting two and two together and possibly making five. And I suppose, you know, it's easy in a situation like this to uh, jump to conclusions and assume something is of a, a paranormal issue. Well, I will say this, which I do find a little bit odd. We're, we're in the top floor of the Tivoli now, which is only used for storage, but it's the top part of the theatre where there was a fire originally in 1945. And, and it's already quite an emotive place. You can see the destruction that went on. There's paint still hanging from the ceiling. It's never been decorated or, or, or fixed up since that moment and that's why this part of the building is never generally used and what I do find interesting is I was up here earlier and had a look around just to get a, a sense of the, of the location went downstairs we spent a couple of hours downstairs looking around and then came back up here again with the staff and what is very strange is we all could smell burning the, the, the smell of smoke, very strong smell, not like cigarette smoke, but proper fire smoke. And uh, the staff were picking up on this as well, and I asked them about whether they've smelled that before, and they said as, as many times as they've been up here before, they've never smelt it ever. Now, that's interesting. That is interesting. I can't work out where it's coming from, if it is coming from uh, the remnants here. Would you still smell that smell, the smoky smell, in, from 1945? Does it always cling well, to the building? That's my point. It wasn't. It wasn't here before. None of us could smell it before, but it's here now. I, I, find, think, I find that odd. I think we're going to have a, one heck of an evening. Of course, you can probably hear just below the EVP. You know, Eamon's doing his stuff. It's very exciting for us. What do you make to all of that equipment, the EVP? It, it is very interesting. I noticed there, was, there were microphones on the side of, uh, of the, uh, the platform that he's got all the gear on. Um, that is for the, you might see the old-fashioned analogue tape machines. Uh, that is for recording sound because um, digitally there's all kinds of filters, but Eamon likes to uh, use old-fashioned analogue input to, to record sounds and therefore you've got a true sound without any chance of it being messed with. So the microphones over the tape machines, the, the whole uh, device has got for making the sounds, that is coming through a, an aerial. There's, there's no audible input, so the noise that's coming out of his speakers, he is generally picking out of the ether. That's very so, strange. So that is odd. What are you going to be looking out for this evening? You're going to, you, you're going to have to try and keep your, your head completely straight when particularly another new member of the team, Leah, who is absolutely terrified already. When she's losing it around your... How are you going to react when a door slams or somebody screams? Well, I will lie to you. If you're sat in the dark and it all is calm and then somebody next to you screams, your automatic human reaction is to, to jump and, and, and be startled as well. So I'm not saying that that's not going to happen to me. However, I would like to think that, you know, I can be a sense of calm when it's all going off. We'll all be hiding behind you then. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> the Tivoli venue had already started to entertain us. I knew that this investigation was going to be an interesting one. We were all eager to get started and to hopefully unravel who, what and why the hauntings were so regular and frightening. 
this is a great location. It's just got so much to it. It's so different. I'm really excited. There's lots of stories, lots of history. What are you thinking? There's loads happened here. I mean, even before this place was built, this was built in the 1920s. Before that, there was like a village uh, big hall here. And they used to do public hangings outside. So that's a good start. Straight Gosh, away. so we could get something going yeah. right back. Right. Glenn, skeptic, we've yeah. already discussed, but it's what a location. Yeah, but remember where we are. We're in, we're in a nightclub, which is empty, you know, mid-afternoon, early evening, and nobody's meant to be in a nightclub when it's like this. It always seems a bit odd, doesn't it? It's, it's unfamiliar at nightclub when it's empty. So, Do you know, you're, you know, you're right, and it's the same with theatres as well, isn't it? Places yeah. like that, all of a sudden it feels a bit eerie because there's nobody here. But was, let, let, let's go on upstairs. Right, I'm going to do a bit of calling out here because we're all here. I actually haven't heard any taps or knocks yet. Has anybody else? No. Let's go into this bit here. Right, should we do a bit of a calling out? Yeah. See if we can hear anything. Hello there. If there's anybody here, if you can see us. What was that? There's a whistle coming from over there. Was it a definite whistle? Yeah, that was, yeah, that was picked up on sound, that, yeah. If you can see us... What was that? There's a whistle coming from over there. <laughs> that was definitely picked up on the microphone, whatever it was. That was... That was I did hear that. Yeah. 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 Try it again. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hello there. My name's Yvette. I want to introduce myself to you. If you can hear me, can you give us a sign of any kind of noise or throw something or bang on something? What was that? Yeah, that was a knock. Can you hear it? No. Did anybody I else hear it? it? Yeah. From up that way. Yeah. Can you throw something, perhaps? You hear it again? Whistle? There's a whistle again. I'm, yeah. I'm getting so all of this. It's coming from behind the side. Yeah, I'm getting all of this. I've got the knock up there and yeah. the whistle. Uh, that's where I keep hearing stuff up there. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly what I'm hearing. It's like someone's just walked up I there. I swear to God, I heard that as well. That, is, that wasn't whistling, though. It's like someone's walking into that room. Yeah, and that's what I've just said. Did anyone follow us up? But there's no one in that room. Oh, well, let's go and have a look. Well, this is the projection room. <laughs> And this is where the projectionist uh, died. He actually died in this room. I mean, what a horrific, horrific uh, death. I mean, that must have been so... Words can't even describe it's, it. It's terrible. I mean, we don't know really what happened. There's a couple of different stories going around. All we know is he was trapped in here. The door was wedged shut and he died of smoke inhalation. But the room is still as it was when it caught yeah. fire. You can see the damage in here and it's still like it. It's yeah. never, never changed. So um, I think we'll probably pick something up in here tonight. Well, it'd be interesting, wouldn't it? I mean, yeah. What do you think, Claire? Well, obviously, it, it paints a very, very sorry picture in here. Obviously, uh, a tremendous tragedy, especially when you see all the, the burns on, on the roof. But, um, you know, it feels desolate. It looks desolate. It's cold. You know, we've got uh, just wood panels on the window as well. If you're in here on your own, your imagination could play a few tricks on you, couldn't it? Let's turn all the lights mm. off in the building and let's start our vigil. The whole building's atmosphere changed as soon as the lights went out. I wanted Leah, a new member of the team, to jump in head first. So who better to send her off with than old pro Stuart? Me and Leah oh, are going upstairs now. What was that? <gasps> what was that? It's, it's, a, it's a cloth. It's a cloth on the floor. Oh, Brian, it's, right it's OK. Asshole. It's OK. <gasps> just give me your hand. Oh. Just, no, because I don't... Just, can't, just, just, can just I get like, my torch yeah, just get, yeah, of course you can. Wait, stay there. Just, of course you can. Crap. <laughs> you're freaking... Are we allowed my torch? Cut, you're allowed anything you like. If I... Listen. Calm down because you're gonna have an accident now. Right, okay. Can we just stay here? We can stay here for a moment if you like, yeah. Because I don't like that room behind me. What room? That Which... room. Okay, it's fine. Let me just spin this around a second. Right, so there's me and Leah. <gasps> Leah Leah's hanging on to me. As you can see, she's not letting me go. 
let's just walk forward. No. Well, let's just stand there out the way of the doorway. Would you like to call out? No! No, I'm scared. It's okay. Shh. Leah, at any time. Shh. I did hear the voice. I heard a voice. We'll, we'll just have a walk down there if you like. No. We'll, we'll just Maybe to a that. few steps. Okay, okay. Please show yourself. Whoa! Oh! 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 Calm down, no! calm down, no! calm down, calm down. No, no, just, just... I'm not going down there, no way. Just There's hold on, no Tom, way I'm hold going on. Down there. And that came from down there. Right, let's Listen, go back. Let no, me, no, let me just go down own. there and just check. No, There's no I'm one not there. staying here. No way, I'm not staying on my own. Come with me then. No, we'll, I don't we'll... want to go down there. No, we'll go in one. Down... <laughs> Can you drop the camera? No, I'm going. I'm not doing Come that. back. With Leah well and truly indoctrinated into the team, I decided to continue with a Ouija board session. For the first time on Most Haunted, a collaboration of old and new, a Victorian Ouija board and state-of-the-art science. Hopefully, we could put a name to one of the entities that was haunting the Tivoli. If there's anybody here, if there's any people here with us now that can hear my voice, they can see us, and you are here in this place. Come towards us now. Let us know your, your name, why you're here. Talk to us, say hello. Can you move the glass? How many of you are here? How many? Take the glass to how many are here? Can you interact with the team? Three. Three. Yeah, you, yeah. You, you can keep on talking. We can turn it yeah. up as loud as you like now. Yeah. We... Uh, apparently, there are three people here according to the Ouija board, Eamon. OK. Shall we switch on the uh, two-way? Yeah. Can you hear us? <gasps> oh, can you interact with the team? Four thirty-four. Four thirty-four. Are you? Do you? Uh, do you belong to this building? And the glass is moving. Yes. Do you? Uh, do you often haunt this place? Yes. 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 What did you ask? On that as well. It's a yes. It's very clear. Keep asking questions, Eamon. Um, God, he's got to ask his name. Could you confirm what your name is? H. <laughs> oh, you just said it. That was very get? clear. Did you get Harry? Yeah. Yeah, he's spelling oh, it out yeah, on the yeah, Ouija yeah. board as well. That was very well. clear. Mm. Could you repeat that name? Okay. Harry, do you, uh, do you want to move on or are you, are you just happy here? Happy? He just said happy, didn't happy, he? Happy, yeah. Can you please tell us here on the Ouija board, Harry, are you... Yeah, you are happy, yes. <laughs> this is great. It seemed that we were in communication with a spirit allegedly called Harry, who had died in the fire. I wanted to find out more, and to do that, myself, Eamon and Darren headed to the projectionist room where a projectionist had been killed during the 1945 fire. Using EVP, could we possibly talk to the very person who died here all those years ago? Harry, can you hear us clearly? Is this where you uh, died? Yeah. What's he saying? 
going to have to get that in edit and amplify it. It's... What was that? <laughs> what was that right That's... at the end? Do you know that sounded like a second voice or something in there. Say, so should we play it again? Yeah, play the whole thing. Mm. That was actually pretty... Uh... Whilst we were upstairs, Stuart sees something that has a profound effect on him. Shut up. I've got my tongue. Some attention's caught by attention. Can I do? Over there, can't. Can I lose my thought? I don't know. Like a figure or... I don't know. It's in the corner of the bar. Don't lose it. What did you hear? What did you see, Stu? Stu. 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 What did you see? Turn the camera over. Listen to that. Stu. Listen to that. You alright, Stu? Yeah. What's wrong? Just let him go. of speech yeah so basically what I'll show you now actually is we'll not use any white noise at all and if you look here it's like a meter here so yeah. you know what's going through so when we speak it's going to pick that up but when we stop speaking if that starts moving by itself that means something's trying to communicate okay. and it's not as clear when that happens so I'm just going to save that um, it's not as clear when that happens but it just shows you something's clearly trying to um, communicate. So here we go, so... Harry, can you hear me clearly? So as you can see, he's picking up waveforms out. Oh gosh, he's speaking to us. This is particularly odd because this is the chair that he died in that we're resting the computer on? Well, we don't know that for sure. We don't know that for sure, do we? Is that not? No, you can't. I don't think we can say if it was? Well, no. Imagine if it was. I mean, well, maybe he could tell us anyway, couldn't he? Well, probably comes. Can I ask? I don't yeah, know. Sure. Harry, is this the chair that you died on? Is this the room that you died in? Okay, I'll play that back. Now this will be interesting because there's no white noise, so any kind of sound that's coming out is purely just, well, it's manifesting itself. Harry, can you hear me clearly? a really good sign because that's without any white noise at all that's just he's generating that energy to speak with just out of thin air so the, the small the small waveforms here the small waveforms are, 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 him, are him talking harry talking you can see our big waveforms here yeah these are the questions we've been asking all these small ones here are all the responses to the questions now what's interesting is well we asked about the chair just yeah. here this is where he says no can so can you replay that mm. here we can Yeah, I just... You hear that, Greg? Mm -hmm. One more time. No. It's having quite... It's chair that he died in. That we're resting a com... No. He said no, it actually sounds said quite no. normal yeah. as well. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. no. <laughs> Play that again? Is, that is quite 
nice question. This is the chair that he died in. That we're resting the computer on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. We don't know that. I mean, he's listening to the conversation as well, which I find really interesting. As our communications with this entity seemed to be getting stronger, we were called downstairs as it seemed that Stuart needed help. I don't know what else. I saw something over there, and whatever it was, I had to get up and go over. Sorry, I can't talk. Take ten. Hmm? Yeah. No, I'm fine. I'm okay. No, no, no. I'm, I'm all right. I'm, it's all good. No, I don't know what's happened. I don't know. I don't know what's going. Well, when you guys left. Something got me attention over there, and I saw, I saw something. I don't know what it was. I can't tell you what it was. It was a male, female, ghost chef. I don't know. I just saw an object going across the room. I feel such an ass. Why? So go on. So I walked over there, and it was almost like something was telling me to stop, because if I carried on, something bad would happen to me. And then something just whispered in my ear. Get up now before you die. So that's when I walked up. <sighs> A seemingly negative entity had really frightened Stuart, but never one to give up, he was determined to go it alone. Meanwhile, I was intrigued with the upper circle. The mirror that had smashed earlier and the whistling meant that there was more to be investigated. So I took Leah, Glenn and Greg with me. Come towards us now. Let us know that you're around us. Is that somebody there? Ah! Somebody on the stairs? No, there was somebody on the stairs. There was somebody there. Oh, there's somebody there. Who was that? Okay, are you sure you're happy about being down there? I'm going to do what I can. Right. That's all I can do. I can't. I don't want to say no and just leave it. I'd like to go back into the gents' toilets because things have been happening there. So, well, <sighs> okay. We had the tap running, and we had the hair dryer, the hair dryer, the hand dryer, right. and I've got that on on record. Well, I think you should go to. It's um... not going to happen again, but. I'll go in there well, okay, and see what happens. If you want to go into the men's toilets, I can't stop you. Well, there's no one in there. I'm not going in there to do lewd acts. <laughs> go on, I'm <laughs> going to go, to, right. go back upstairs. All right. Are you sure you're all right? Yeah, is Yvette OK? Yeah, she's fine, yeah. All right. Hello? Hello? Somebody's just... Did somebody just... Somebody's come through these doors. Yes, see? Yes. Somebody just... Somebody is just... Right, is somebody in the building? We need to check. We need to check because... We're just here. These doors just banged, and I've just come straight out there because I thought one of you had kind of come in and gone, oh, shit, they're down there. Right, I swear to God, you saw what I saw, didn't you? I don't know what I saw. You didn't know. I I show know you what I saw. I show you? Should I show you what I saw? This is what I saw. So you're where Greg is, and this is what I saw. I got my torch straight away, and that's when we ran. Somebody leaned in and then leaned out. Right, well, there's no... All we, well, Stuart and I, literally, we were just there. So we were saying, right, we're going to take about ten steps in and then we're going to start the vigil. And we heard the door, this door, not that one, this door, open. And we turned around and thought, oh, someone's come in, not knowing we're down here. You know, it might be Eamon or someone with the machine, but there was no one there. So I went through this one, and then I went through that one and shouted upstairs, and you just said, oh, I heard you say, is anyone, did anyone go downstairs well, or something? Well, if, no, if everybody's accounted for, then I've just seen a ghost. I have just seen a ghost because right. I, it was as clear as anything and they, they, they lent in and then they lent out and it was weird. I'm just going to come, Stu, give me... Just really see. Can I just show you what it was? Yeah. 
No, I was looking at a vet, unfortunately. No, I was looking at a vet. It was, a, it, and do you know, there's something about it that makes me think of a woman. It was when we were talking about the rock. The thing is, right, I mean, look. Look at the, the shadowy effects and everything. And anyone just moving around? It was a head. He popped out his head, had a look and went, and then, boom, that was it. I didn't hear any footsteps either. No, I didn't hear footsteps. That's why. Mm -hmm. Right, let's, let's go back to doing what, talking, what we're doing, calling out, and then seeing. That's, that's really freaked me out. And we've got the sink. This is the tap that was running with water. So all I'm going to do now, is going to put that on there a second. Let's see what I can do. What the? What, hello? Okay. Stay there, stay there, Steve, stay there. Right, we're not going to walk away from this now. This tap has come on by itself. I was over there. And there was no reason for this to come on. Um, if I get scared, can the torch go on? No. I think if I just sit on the car, see. You're shaking. I know, because I'm scared. I was stood near the chair that died. A chair, the chair that died? died. <laughs> What's the same thing? No. Right, I'm getting freaked out right now. Calm down, it's fine. Oh. Can you come and stand next to me? It's fine, look. No, I can feel something sticky on the floor now. Walk into this room now. Walk <gasps> into the room. Drop the keys on the floor. Yeah, drop the keys on the floor. Make a noise, come on, do something. There's right behind me. There's nothing behind you. You are right, Greg? What are you looking out for? I'm just looking around. Is anyone on the stairs? No, but I thought it was through a shadow. See? Oh, torch time. No, just no, is there anyone on the stairs? The You'll get more shadows. Do you want me to go and have a look? <gasps> Are we all going together? See, now I've just heard a door. Downstairs or up here? Yeah, down. Is that a piano or a guitar? There's a guitar in here. No, it's not a guitar. Because it doesn't... Um, I need a bit of light. There we go. Uh, yeah, it doesn't work, I know, but... No, but it's, I'll tell you what it sounds like. It sounds like something firing up, like, you know, a big... A Did you hear that? I heard that, yeah. I definitely I heard, heard that I heard noise. that, but this is... No, it's, I know, not, it's not that. that. It's not that. that. It, it's like a proper piano noise. If there's someone here... Please make yourself be known. Show yourself to me. Right, should we go? Should we go back? Mm-hmm. I'm not going on. I, I just can't get over that. I just don't like this room. Like, it's just not a nice room to be in. You see, that freaks me out. That room freaks me out. Every time we step out of this room. Yeah. What the hell is that? It right. sounds like an, an elect. Go back in the room it again. It sounds like something powering up. I've decided. It's, it's a piano. Mm. It's definitely. You know when, you, when, you, when you, you switch something on, heavy duty, and it's like a big mains throb. That's what it sounds like to right, me. Well, it is like a theatre. Could it not be? Is a there any, are there any steps springy? Maybe. Is it this metal plate? It's nothing on Just here. Trying to... Like, that's the third time now. We, but we're not banging the right. door like that, are right. we? Right, go back in yeah. or stay out here. And we'll oh, all... I don't think I can... Right, you ready? If there's someone here in this, you know, the, the toilet, the restroom, Please make yourself be known. I'm not here to harm you or disrespect you in any way. Now, I know there is someone. I 
not going to say a word. You had me in shot. I'll stay quiet for a second while this just runs its course. There you go. Back in here, footsteps. There's no way I'm going out there. I'm not going out, I can hear them now. If I turn the camera around, I'm only gonna light up what's there. Ah! the hand dryer. I think that's probably a good time for me now to to actually go. We had investigated every last nook and cranny of the Tivoli and had recorded some good anomalies. I was convinced I had seen a ghost, as had Stuart, but I was a little disappointed at the lack of identity. Who was it I had seen? Was it the same apparition that had terrified Stuart? Would the cellar give us any clues, or had we outstayed our welcome? Turn on these fans. Shovel. Move this little shovel. Oh, that come hurtling through the sky. Knock me on the head with it. Oh, no, Carl, don't say that. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. Oh, sorry. What? Oh, Heart's come out of the chest. Oh. Something's gone in there. Smash! Look, smash! Oh, something has smashed. Oh, man. Is, is it the bolt? Is it the bolt in there? I'm having a mini heart attack. No, it's not smashed. It's, it's in there. It's in there or something. No, oh, no. There's... I'm having a heart attack. Something definitely oh, yeah. Give me that. Yeah. What's up, Sue? Nothing, I'll just have a heart yeah, attack through well. that shock. I'm fine, I'm alright. Where's it gone right in there? And where did the ball come from? Oh. Look. I can't have taken it all. I don't know who can have taken it. Was that you? Well, you're you're There's no strip lighting in there, Carl. No, it's a small ball. Is it? It's an art ball. It's like it's like that, like that. No, that's a projection thing, isn't it? Or it's a lighting thing. I'm actually cracking my heart. That's it, that isn't it? Ah, because it, there's fragments of glass. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. And on the floor. See? That could have hit one of us in the you face. Know, where did it come from? I don't know, I don't know. No way. Is there anything in that tape so far? I don't like that. Should you? It's all straight lighting, isn't it? The Tivoli venue beggars belief. What an extraordinary night with extraordinary people. One step closer to finding the truth. Holy! Please show yourself. No! 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 no. no. I'm not going down there. No way! Can I drop the camera? Can repeat that name? That's amazing. And then something just whispered in my ear. Get up now before you die. Is that somebody there? <laughs> if you want to go into the men's toilets, I can't stop you. I have just seen a ghost because oh, I it was as clear as anything. Oh <laughs> torch time. <laughs> Now, I know there is someone.
Oh, sorry. Until next time, sleep tight. Leave a message as you go, find the moment.